continuing this garage conversion to a bedroom. We've completed raising the floor to the house level on our previous video. In this video, we will cover the wall with studs where the garage door has been blocked on the exterior and the garage door that was hidden behind the wall has been taken down. The previous owners had built an interior wall with studs and drywall but it took up about 12 inches in the interior of this room in which we will regain most of it by doing it right. Instead of using 1x2 furring strips, we're using treated 2x4s laying flat on the wall and screwing them to the existing 2x6 frame of the removed garage door. Plus using tap cons to the concrete, we frame all around the wall first including the bottom of the wall. It's a bit of an overkill doing it with 2x4s instead of 1x2s, but it just didn't feel right taking down those 2x6s that framed the old garage door there. We did a little notching to get that pipe behind that 2x6. We added some extra cross studs. We've added uh, insulation board between the masonry wall and the studs and are ready to install the drywall. But before we do that, I'm trying this PVC molding, also known as vinyl drywall trim or vinyl day trim. It provides a finished edge of the drywall that meets against the finished ceiling or walls. It can be nailed or slipped on. Once installed, all it needs is a bead of caulking between the trim and wall or ceiling. This will avoid having to tape and plaster the corner walls and ceiling. It's ideal if you're building a partition that you may want to take down someday, but it can be permanent. It also eliminates distorting an existing knockdown on ceilings or walls. They are very easy to cut to size and staple to the edges of the wall. Or you can pre-install them on the drywall before hanging it on. By the way, the corner should be cut at a 45 degree angle to give it a nice finish. Before we start installing the drywall, we finish installing all the electrical outlets in the wall and finish adding insulation board. And we install a first sheet. Inserting the top into the trim first and then slide it into the J trim on the side. On the following sheets, we pre install the J trim to the drywall, in which it made it a little easier, but if you have a third person, it's fine either way. The extra effort installing this trim is well worth it when you see the finished product. Once inserted into the trim and it's aligned to the center of the stud, you can screw it in. Make sure the screws are countersunk into the paper so it will not interfere with compounding. The J trim is looking good so far. As you see, it's nice and flush to the wall and ceiling. And there's the finished drywall all screwed in. The outlets are in and the trim give it a great finish. All it needs is a bead of caulking, which will be done after the compounding and sanding. Before we start the compounding, we put tape on the joints to avoid cracking. On small jobs like this, I like using fiberglass self-adhesive drywall joint mesh tape. The self-adhesive makes it easy to pre-apply it on the joints, and the screen allows the compound to penetrate into the joint. With the regular paper, you need to apply compound into the joint first, then apply the tape which needs to be wet first. This mesh is much faster for flat joints. For inside corners, it's easier with paper tape because of the crease it has along the middle. It can be pre-folded. Once the mesh tape is applied, we're ready for the first coat of compound on the mesh and as you go, just plug in the screw holes. Just a tight coat is enough for the first pass and let it dry. The first coat is basically just to cover the screen tape and fill in the gap between the joints. 
Once it's all done, we let it sit overnight. Before the second coat, you can send down the screw holes to see if you need a second coat as well. And scrape any edges off the joints before you apply that second coat. Wipe it down with a damp sponge if necessary and give it a nice tight coat. As you apply it and smooth it, always pitch the knife at a 45 angle and always end your pass towards the finished side and pitch the edge of the blade away from the middle of the taped area. I'm not a professional at this but I did a lot of body work on cars in my teen years. The basics are almost the same. Anyone can do this if you got a little patience and don't forget sanding will take any imperfections. But the smoother and even you apply the compound the less sanding will be required. After the second coat has dried, we send down the high spots and wipe down the area again before the final coat is applied to take care of the small imperfections. You can feel any of them by running the palm of your hand along the area. Just do a tight thin coat and later run a block with 200 grit sandpaper. A few passes will be sufficient. Now before we paint this with primer, we caulk the jade trim on the edges of the walls and ceiling. This will look nice once it's painted. Make sure you put plenty of caulking on the joint between the wall and the uh, jade trim. This will ensure a nice tight seal. Run your finger up and down on it and push it in. And keep a sponge handy. Make sure you wipe off all of the access. For information on tools and material used in this video, see the links in the description. I hope this helps someone or give an idea of what's involved doing a project like this. On the next video we will continue this garage conversion. We will show how we raised the closet door opening to make up for the raised floor to the house level. And you all have a great day.